Hi, I'm Carl Winter. I'm Extension Food Toxicologist and Director of the Food Safe Program at the University of California, Davis. Pesticides are one tool that allows our producers to make it easier to grow food. We have a lot of waste that comes from damage from insects and plant diseases and weeds. So by controlling those, we can produce more food, make it more available, more affordable for consumers. The levels of pesticides that we see in our foods are typically at very small fractions of the levels that would be required for long-term health consequences. So the risks from pesticide residues in foods are minuscule. The benefits from consuming lots of fruits and vegetables and whole grains in the diet are immense. We've got a tremendous amount of data showing that consuming a lot of these foods can decrease one's risk of heart disease, certain types of cancers. As a result, Clearly, the benefits from the use of pesticides tend to significantly outweigh any theoretical risks from pesticides. We have many agencies involved in regulation. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency is responsible to determine that pesticides pose a reasonable certainty of no harm in foods, and they have to follow the best toxicological and risk assessment practices that are available to them to allow them to make those conclusions. So it's a pretty high bar that any pesticide manufacturer has to get over before they can have their uh, pesticides approved for use. We also have regulatory programs. Uh, the major federal agency that does that is the Food and Drug Administration. When they analyze produce from all over the world for pesticide residues, they find that the typical levels encountered are very, very far lower than the allowable levels and that the incidence of violative residues is quite low. We do not allow in this country residues of pesticides that are not registered here in this country for use on particular commodities. So anything coming in from other countries still has to meet our residue standards. Washing produce is very important and I think all consumers should do that. The major benefit they will get is the potential reduction in the microbial risks on the foods. So by washing your fruits and vegetables you can minimize these particular risks which are very significant. At the same time, washing might reduce pesticide residues to, uh, you know, to even lower levels than we're already encountering them. So it's good in terms of reducing residues, it's great in terms of reducing the risk from microbial contamination of foods. We've seen over many decades that the pests that we're trying to control with pesticides can develop resistance. As a result of that, we have some fairly sophisticated resistance management programs that are in place to make sure that we don't constantly try to control the pests with the same agent and allow them to develop the resistance. So often, just like we have crop rotation to increase the fertility in the soil, we also have pesticide rotation to minimize the chance of any resistance occurring for the weeds, the insects, or the plant diseases that we can control with pesticides. Pesticides can be used on organic produce provided that they're approved for use by the National Organic Standards Board. Additionally, when we do residue monitoring, we find that a small percentage, about a quarter of organic foods, do test positive for pesticide residues. The important thing to realize, though, is the amount of the pesticide that's there. We have a saying in toxicology, it's the dose makes the poison. It's the amount of a chemical, not its presence or its absence, that determines the potential for harm. And with pesticides in food, whether it be conventional food or organic foods, the levels of pesticide residues in those foods are very, very low and not considered to be of any health concern. Traditionally, the pesticides approved for use in organic production uh, tend to be more biologically derived or tend to be more naturally occurring chemicals. They still follow the same principles of toxicology as synthetic chemicals, but they do normally have a natural origin.